Howard Blank, our guest, he is vice president. This is a long title. <laughs> Media, entertainment, responsible gaming, responsible emphasis on responsible gaming, great Canadian gaming corporation. What do they call you at the office? Not late for dinner, I hope. <laughs> Probably. Well, Mr. Blank, let's talk about uh, who's coming, who's, sure. who's coming up. I'm really excited. We have, we have some big name artists that we haven't announced yet that I thought I'd give you the scoop. Mm. Uh, um, Robin Williams is coming. Really? Yes, I'm very excited. He likes this town. And I believe the format is David Steinberg's going to be interviewing him. It's like a Tonight really? Show where he's sitting down at the chair and he just goes mm. into everything about his life. And if you haven't seen Robin Williams, a little caution because he does go crazy live as opposed to television where he's censored a little more. But he's phenomenal. Um, we're in the process of getting Willie Nelson, which is really exciting. Uh, On the road again? Yeah, and we've never had him. Um, there are more old drunks and there are old doctors, so I think we better have another round. Willie's first album. First album. Wow. First album. Ask him to sing it if he remembers the words. I will when I am. I'm a Willie fan. Are you? Well, then you mm, must come. I our, must. The biggest one that I'm really excited about we've never had. We've had the Beach Boys before. We've had Brian Wilson before. They're together. They're reuniting, which really? we thought would never happen. Across the land or Across just the at land. the casino? No, <laughs> well, they're going to be re reuniting on a tour and we'll have them for British Columbia. How fabulous. So that'll be really nice. I mean, if you're a Beach Boys fan, to see them all together mm -hmm. again doesn't get better than that. Well, there's uh, often they come back together and they've written new music, uh, mm. as you know, mm -hmm. and nobody wants to hear the new music. No. <laughs> they want to hear the old and music. And this will be the classics. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and the, the great 60s and the great 50s and all of that. Um, Whoopi? Yeah, Whoopi Whoop, Goldberg. Whoopi? I'm excited about her. I, again, there's one on my bucket list. Mm. She's a phenomenal orator. She just captures the audience. She has such a career. Uh, you know, uh, she'll even, I'm sure, talk about why she changed her name to Whoopi and why Goldberg, because her mom thought Goldberg's a good name, it's Jewish, it should be in the business, everybody will oh, love really? it. She'll get hired. Yeah. So, uh, some great stories there, and I love her on The View. I think she's great, she's mm -hmm. really grounded there, and I've always wanted to have her, and, you know, she's won almost every award you can get, and, uh, you know, Grammy, Emmy, Tony, mm -hmm. so, uh, phenomenal. Well, she's... And uh, Oscar, of course. A common sense broad. Yeah. And, yeah. But still has grace. She calls it mm -hmm. like she sees it. She calls it. it like she sees it. And uh, as you know, not all of them do. No. Uh, Ms. Etta James. No. Uh, such a fan. Yeah. She's gone. Very sad. Singing to the gods. Yeah, she, she's singing up there, uh, again, on my bucket list. Mm. She was not in great health, so she wasn't touring for a while. She, she got better. We had her. She was in a wheelchair literally till she got on stage. One of my favorites is they have some video of me walking her out on stage to her stool. Uh, she just, I fell in love with her like an aunt, and we just had that connection. One of the great things was we had a very limited meet and greet for her. She couldn't do a lot of people. And she was telling me about how many years ago in the old days uh, um, that the, the white man did not treat her well. And, and she, mm -hmm. she was screwed a lot by uh, financially and emotionally, et cetera, by those producers and fly-by-night venues. So she was very happy that I was a caring young man in mm. her eye. Her eyes. Anyways, backstage. And a white man. And a white man. <laughs> backstage, uh, we're, go we're setting up for the meet and greet. She says, I want them in my dressing room. I said, well, interesting. Okay. So we lined up about 12 people in the dressing room. She's sitting on the couch and she goes, okay, photographer, come in here. And he goes, go take a picture of them. We don't know why. So we take a picture of the group of 12. She goes, now you can say you were in the room with me, <laughs> even though she's not in the picture. <laughs> so it's a great story of that. I just pull in a prank, but that mm. there's no pictures with Miss James. Okay. At last. Uh, Don Rickles, mm. he gets out of the pond still. Yeah, you Do you know, give him a little uh, talk before he hits the stage or dare you? No, uh, he just went through a tragedy. He lost his son, Larry, oh, no. 41 years old. I was working with him on some projects. Very sad. Went into the hospital for some minor acid reflux, caught one of those super bugs and passed away at Cedar sinai Horrible thing. You never lose a child. And, and no. they have two children, Mindy and, and Larry. Yes. And, but uh, Larry wanted Don to keep going on, and Don is coming to Seattle in March, and uh, we'll have him back probably mm. over the summer mm -hmm. again. He's, he's just drawn the crowds again. People are saying, I really need to see him before he stops doing what he right. does. And uh, nicest man in the world, donates millions of dollars in Los Angeles to philanthropy and to his synagogue there. And yes. just uh, one of those people you never think of. And mm -hmm. I really believe he, he's been under the radar. He hasn't deserved the accolades he should have should have gotten. Should have gotten. Uh, Bill Cosby. Mm. 
nicest man. He can make a joke about Jello. Yeah, nicest man in the world. Uh, he uh, loves to be hands-on on everything. Like when we bring him soup, he wants to go see the chef and talk about how the ingredients were made, and he'll sit really? down to it. Yeah, very much hands-on. Very fun guy. Mr. Curious. Uh, so you meet a Russell Peters, and mm. and you meet a Bill Cosby, and how are they different? I mean, of course they're different, but a, a young one. Uh, a, a senior in the biz. I think it goes to whether you have an old soul in you or not on some mm. of these artists. Uh, what was interesting with Russell was uh, he wanted to wade into the crowd afterwards the show so literally he was in a mosh of people and you could see him floating around and signing and pictures and he wanted to connect with his people. I'd never seen that done before. We had a thousand people in our lobby just mm. encasing mm. him and circling him mm. and it was it was quite nice. Um, Again, very nice man, uh, was very grateful, uh, very Monty Python-esque in his humor, really enjoyed yes. him. Um, again, hopefully he'll be back, uh, sold out crowds, and he I'm certainly sure. enjoyed himself. Uh, uh, Chris Christopherson, I saw him there. Mm. You know I yeah. want to marry him, I told you last time, Did don't you? tell his current wife. No. But you could maybe work on that if things don't go so well. Well, again, you know, you talk about the six degrees of separation. When we brought him a few years ago, Elvis Costello called me and said, I'd like to come see him. Of course. of course, he goes backstage and they're chatting. And then Elvis had that show on CTV, mm. sort of like the performers from many years ago. Who's his first guest? Chris. Of course. So we know we put them together mm. at, at River Rock. And, and, you know, Elvis and Diana have a place on the North Shore. So it wasn't far for him yeah, to come. Yeah, they sure do. And Elvis and Diana ever think about it? Oh, absolutely. I guess the question is, can you afford them? Well, we've had Diana perform with the David Foster Gala at our venue. Yes. And he's having his 25th big gala in Victoria mm -hmm. upcoming. And uh, that was the first sort of resurgence of the Foster um, Foundation here in BC, again, doing big events. And that was phenomenal. And we've had Michael Buble. Yes. So some of these greats have graced our stage and we're lucky. Mm -hmm. And some have been public and some have been for these galas. Well, they're locals. Uh who hit the big time, but Diana is exactly the same as she was when I first interviewed her when she was playing piano in Nanaimo. Yeah, wonderful lady. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they have beautiful kids and absolutely uh, very grounded. Those twins, that's yeah. chaos. Yeah. <laughs> you think you want chaos, have twins, right? So uh, regulation-wise, with all of this, who's your boss? The government, how does that work? Like gaming, at the racetrack, sure. wherever. Gaming in British Columbia is overseen by the British Columbia Lottery Corporation. So they're the crown agency that oversees all of, all of the gaming aspects of it. We also answer to the Gaming Policy Enforcement Branch, which, are, which is the policing body that goes to the Attorney General and the Solicitor General responsible for that area. Uh, when it comes to the non-gaming, we would follow the rules just like any other business, licensed, etc., sure. like that. Um, but uh, And we also have liquor board issues because we have liquor on our property right. so we have a number of different people we're also a public company so we have all the uh, securities commission and all the ethics sure. and things like that yeah, so you and Facebook yeah we apparently yeah we're about to be <laughs> we're very very highly regulated but I think that's a good thing and again money still goes to charity health care education social services what a model there's many countries looking at what we do in Canada and very proud of what we have here nice to see you thanks Fanny thank you uh, Howard Blank.